All right, everybody. So we're going to start talking about how to identify an antibody. So I wanted to be able to go over this um, with you myself. So we're going to picture this as our first panel. So this is patient Kelly. Um, so at this point, what we're going to do, I'm just going to thin out my pen a little bit um, because I want to shrink it down a little bit. All right. So, um, and then I always want to make sure I do that, and date, and my patient is one, two, three, four. Um, so this is typically what the panel will look like, and depending on what you're testing, um, you could have three phases of testing on here, you can have tango results, you can have, uh, which is an automated results or, or something like that, um, or you can have gel results. So I'm going to do it with just gel because that's going to be typically what you um, experience. So at this point, we're going to go ahead. Um, I'm going to basically talk you through um, the identification part after you've set up the panel. So you understand that each of these is, each number is a reagent. So this is like, this is cell number 12. That's a separate reagent bottle. And all of these pluses, are what is on the um, what is on the cell, the reagent cell, and the zeros indicate that that antigen is not on the red cell. So I'm going to plug in the results. Um, so basically, you guys did uh, type and screen last week in gel, uh, and you got reactivity anywhere from zero to I think you actually got four plus, um, but none of you have antibodies, I promise. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in um, the reactions, and we will go ahead and identify uh, this antibody. So we'll go 1 plus, 2 plus, 0, 0, 2 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus, 0, 0, 1 plus, 0. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at these cells that have no reactivity. So these cells that are negative are not finding, so whatever antibody is in this patient, they are not finding it on the red cells. So we can, on these that have zeros, go ahead and cross off all of the pluses because that means it did not find that reactivity. So we go ahead and we cross off, cross off. So that's for those two and then we'll go down to cell 19 and 20 and we can cross those off and rule out. Get ready to rule out anyway. And one thing that we have to be careful of, so I always go ahead and I cross everything off. I'm very visual, so as a supervisor, I was also very visual and I required my um, employees to do this. Um, the pathologists are going to end up reviewing this after we do. They want to see it. Okay, so I've done all of my ruling out, so, or all my crossing off, excuse me. So now I'm ready to rule out. So to rule out, typically AABB requires us to have two homozygous cells. So what is a homozygous cell? So we'll go, for example, we're going to look at um, MNN. So this here, this cell right here, it's positive for N and negative for M, which means that is homozygous for N. So that means that cell has a double dose of N and no M as in Mary. So that double dose of N is going to react a little stronger if it was present. So we will require um, two rule outs for homozygous so we can see those a little better. So we'll start over here. Um, the other option is at minimum one homozygous or three heterozygous rules out. The heterozygous are going to be that weaker expression. So we, they don't like to rule out only on heterozygous because as you can imagine, if the cell looks like this, right? So we have N and M kind of mixed it's going to react weaker than say this one and th that will be stronger so we could potentially miss a reaction we don't want to miss that reaction 
All right, so if we go over to D, so I usually start, I cross everything off that's negative and not reacting, and then I start um, from left to right and I go up the column. So here we have one, two, three, three rule outs, so I can cross off D. Um, for C, we have two rule outs, and they are both homozygous, so one, two, cross out big C. Um, big E, we have one, and when I was saying they're both homozygous, as in, if you look at little c, little c was negative, and big c was positive, so that's a homozygous. So then we go over to big E, so big E is positive, little e is negative, so that's a homozygous E, so I've got one, two, three, so I have three rule outs, so I have at least one homo, so I can cross that off. Um, little c, I have one, two, three, and two homozygous, so I can cross that off. Um, little e, one, two, three, four rule outs. Um, F, I have two, that's fine. CW is considered um, a low frequency. As you can see, no cell um, has a reactivity there, so we can go ahead and rule that out. Same with V. Um, so big K, so I have one homozygous right now. So I have to flag that, and I usually put a one H because I need a rule out. Um, and I'll explain to you what that means um, in a minute. We'll go through everything. All right, so then little k or Chilano, one, two, three, four. Um, KPA is considered a low frequency, so we don't usually worry about that. KPB and JSB are high frequency, so we don't usually care about that. JSA is a low frequency, so we're not gonna worry about that. All right, so Duffy A, I need two homozygous to rule that out. Duffy B, I have one, two homozygous, I have Four, five homozygous, so I can cross that off. Um, JKA, I have one, two homozygous plus a heterozygous, so I can cross that off. Um, JKB, I have one, two, three, two homozygous, one hetero. Um, XGA, I have one, two rule outs. Um, LEA, I have one, but this is typically um, a low frequency. So we don't always worry about this one, but I'm just going to put a one up here to see if I can find it. Um, so if I'm looking for, see, I have other rule outs that I have to find. So I'm going to find reagent cells that are negative for that and try and use them um, to rule LEA out as well. Um, LEB, I have one, two, three, so we'll cross that off. Um, big S, I have one homozygous, one hetero, one homo, another hetero, another hetero, so I can cross big S. Little s, I have one, two, three heterozygous, so that's acceptable to rule out. Um, this is M right here, um, and N. So M, I have one homozygous and three heterozygous, so I can rule that out. N, I have one, two, three heterozygous plus one homozygous, I can rule that out. Um, P1, I have one, two, three, four, I can rule that out. LUA is considered a low frequency, we don't usually worry about that. And LUB, I am crossing that off. Okay, so now I've done all my cross-offs and I have three possible, well, two possibilities. I have Big K and I have Duffy A. So now, which one is the most likely? So I have one cross-off for Big K, but I have none for Duffy A. So then what I want to do is I want to go back over here, okay? I want to go look at the reactivity and I want to see does the pattern match? So I have one plus two plus. So we look over here and yes, I've got reactivity. So then I look at, I've got two, three, one. And then we go back to Duffy A, two, three, and one. So that is most likely going to be my possible match at this point. So then I go back and I look at the reactivity. So I have two one pluses. Okay, this is a one plus. Um, I have two one pluses and two pluses for the others. So then I go over and I say, hmm, what does this one plus look like? And if I look, the one plus reactions are heterozygous cells. Okay? So this is showing dosage. Dosage. Okay? We've got a double dose here. Oops, I don't want to cut. Um, sorry, little error on my end here. Um, so this is showing the dosage effect, where these here are a weaker reaction than this here, 
because this one has a double dose, so cell number 13 has a double dose of Duffy A on the cells. So cell number 13 looks like this. Okay, it's got that double dose. And then cell number 12 has got A, B, A, B, A. So it's got a mix. So it's showing a little weaker reactivity. So the most likely antibody is our Duffy A. Okay, now that's only presumptive. So what we now have to do is we have to prove that it's there. So how do we prove that it's there? Well, first off, we have to rule out big K. So what we want to do is we're going to take another panel um, and then we're going to search out another cell that has big K on it but does not have Duffy A antigen. And then we can rule out big K and hopefully we can find an LEA and we'll rule out LEA as well. Then, um, so then we'll run it again in gel just like we normally would and we're looking for negativity. If that rule out cell that we've searched out to run um, has reactivity, then there may be a duplicate antibody here. So there might be more than just the Duffy A. So then, if what we have to do is we need three pause and we need three negatives, the rule of three to say that it is there. So we have one, two, three positives, right? and one, two, three negatives, okay? Then what we have to do is we have to antigen type. So what we will now do is use, uh, we'll use anti-FYA and the patient cells um, and follow the manufacturing um, inserts. Typically speaking, they'll run anywhere from room temperature, um, just immediate spin reactions to 37 incubation to full um, indirect antiglobulin testing where we take it all the way out like a screen. Um, so in this case, um, we do have to check to make sure that the patient is transfused. If the patient has been transfused in the last um, three months, we cannot use antigen typing. So it's considered a presumptive um, ID because we can't antigen type because if that patient's been transfused, what cells are we going to see? We're going to see a mix of patient cells and donor cells from whatever they were transfused with. So then what we want to do is the last thing is if we have to transfuse this patient and they've been identified with a Duffy A, we have to antigen screen the um, donor cells for what? Duffy A. Okay? Um, because we, now that we've identified that, that patient has a Duffy A antibody present in their plasma, what would happen if we transfuse them with Duffy A positive cells? Take a guess. If you guess transfusion reaction, you are absolutely correct. Um, so this is just an example of an antibody identification. Um, it's really important that um, you understand this. Um, so I want you to take a look at this. Let me know if you want me to do another one for you, and I shall. Okay? Bye. Oh, uh, before I say bye, um, so, well, I already said bye, but um, before I do that, um, these um, any patient that's identified with an antibody needs a full cross match, okay? And what does a full cross match mean? It means carry it all the way out into the anti-globulin phase. Immediate spin, 37 degrees, and um, IgG phase with check cells or a gel full cross match, okay? All right, later, guys.